NIH's recent technical breakthrough, the Center for Research in Cognitive Systems at NIH has developed a chatterbot, a robot, who can act like virtual people on the net. The chatterbot is the first of its kind in Asia. Its developers say that it can think and slowly acquire a personality of its own. In the upcoming report, Rupali Mehra explores the various facets of this new technical marvel. Who says computers cannot think? They can if NIIT can help it. The Center for Research in Cognitive Systems at NIIT has developed a chatterbot or a robot that can act like a virtual person on the net. The chatterbot is the first of its kind in Asia. Its basic elements are a speech engine, a semantic network, a database and an adaptive interface. Once installed at the website of a company, this appliance can answer queries from its browsers. Chatterbot is an emergent and adaptive system. Uh, idea is to create a system which will uh, converse with you like a human being, despite it being a computer program. And uh, now there are several characteristics of a human-to-human -human, uh, interaction. For example, uh, if it's a repetitive question, I know that, you know, I remember that you have asked me this question, so this time maybe I'll think that you have not understood properly, let me explain it differently. So can a computer do that? What makes this device different according to its developers is that it is able to think and slowly acquire a personality of its own. So it is just not a program with a static memory but has a memory that keeps growing. When it comes to chatterbots, at the last count there were about seven. Uh, but this, all of them are static. Actually uh, six of them are in the United States. I think this is the only one outside of it. And um, most of them are static databases, meaning they, if you ask the same question, it gives the same answer each time. Uh, this fellow here is an adaptive chatterbot, so the more conversation it gets, the better it becomes. And some people say uh, that the, since I teach it, the more conversation it gets, the more like me it responds. Okay? So it actually grows over a period of time and uh, it will definitely not say the same thing to the same question twice. It may, but it also may not, just like a human being. This internet appliance can go a long way in aiding e-commerce. The chatterbot could act like a virtual representative of a company who has a website on the net. So there is no need for people to answer queries from browsers. Now this program can take over. So if you say that I have my uh, business website on the internet, then you must also have your receptionist. And that receptionist cannot be human. What we have in today's systems are pages after pages after pages of text. And often people don't read it. What we need is an interactive system where you can ask a question and say, can I meet so and so? And the system should be able to tell you yes or no or whatever it is. How much does this cost? Why is it so expensive? Uh, can you give me a discount? These are all questions which will become very important in e-commerce and thousands of them will come. When it comes to the other two internet appliances that I talked about, their applications are mostly for surveillance. So wherever you have a situation where you need to have a sentry going up and down, let's say you have a large petrochemical plant somewhere and you want to have a sentry going up and down, um, that sentry doesn't have to be human anymore. All the technology we need to make that sentry a little thing that moves is already there. You don't actually have to expose a sentry or a soldier or anybody to a hazardous situation where all that he or she is expected to do is to watch. So how does the chatterbot adapt to the business environment it is placed in? Behind this device is a trainer, also like a tutor. In event the chatterbot does not understand the query being asked by the browser, the robot goes back to the trainer who keys in the solution. <laughs> 